Welcome back. Today we are talking about parallel lines and transversal. We're going to continue with the parallel lines and transversal, but now we're going to talk about the angle relationships that are created when parallel lines are intersected uh, by a transversal. And we're actually going to do it in two parts. So this is just going to be part one. We're going to use the vocabulary that we used the other day. So remember exterior and interior and alternate. Uh, we're also going to use some terms from last week. Okay, so let's get started. First things first, remember, lots of color. Color always helps in aiding your memory. Second thing, watch the video the first time. Don't write down all the notes, right? The luxury of having this video is that you can watch it more than once. I strongly recommend you watch it more than once. Because what happens when you watch a movie like 10 times and you pick something up on that 10th time that you never saw before? So take your time with this. All right, so. First things first, we have to have our parallel lines. Are they parallel yet? No, they're not. So I need to put my markings in there. And now I'm going to put a transversal. And with the transversal, what it has created is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different angles. So I'm going to label these angles. And I'm going to label them one and two and three and four. And then I'm going to go um, A. B, C, D. Okay, so eight different angles. And the first pair of angle relationships that we're going to talk about, you've actually already heard and you've done some work. They're going to be vertical angles. So, our first set are vertical angles. Now, if you remember, vertical angles are angles that are on opposite sides of two intersecting lines. So as I look here, I have an intersecting line here and here. So if I'm looking at angle 1, what's opposite of 1? Well, 1 and 3 are opposites. So vertical angles, angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. Put a check mark by them. Angle 2 is opposite of 4. So 2 and 4 are vertical angles. And that takes care of the top parallel line. Go down here, A, A is in the same location as 1. So if 1 and 3, then it's going to be A and C. A and C are vertical angles. And then B and D are also going to be vertical angles. Now, as you're looking at vertical angles, you, are, you should already know this, but let's look at them. Angle 1 is obtuse. Angle 3 is obtuse. If they're both obtuse, they have to be congruent. So all vertical angles are congruent. And we'll make the congruent sign right there. So every single pair, 1 and 3, they're congruent. 2 and 4, congruent. A and C, congruent. D and B or B and D, congruent. Which means they're equal to each other. So when you're solving for an equation or you're solving for a value, you set them equal to each other. Okay. Let's look at the next angle pair relationship. And this one, again, is one that you've heard before. This one is linear pair. All right, so let's get our parallel lines. Show they're parallel, put my transversal in. We're going to name these angles the exact same as the ones in the past. 1 and 2, 3 and 4, A, B, C, D. Okay? So linear pairs, uh, they are supplementary and they're adjacent. So they have to be next to each other on a straight line. Okay? So let's look. 1. What is 1 adjacent to? Well, 1 is adjacent to 2, and it's also adjacent to 4. And they're on a straight line. So... We're going to say angle 1 and 2 are a linear pair. What's 2 next to? 2 is also next to 3 on a straight line. So 2 and 3. What's 3 next to? 3 is next to 4. So 3 and 4. And then what's 4 next to? 4 is next to 1. So 4 and 1. So if you wanted to look at it this way, those are a linear pair because they're on a straight line next to each other. Those are on a linear pair. 
Those are in a linear pair, and the last set are in a linear pair. So if you've got that up top, you're going to have the exact same thing down here. So A and B, uh, B and C, C and D, and D and A. So how many pairs of linear pairs do we have? One, two, three, we have four, five, six, seven, eight sets of linear pairs with one set of parallel lines and a transversal. Okay? Now, as we look at this, angle, let's go down here, it's a little bit less confusing. A is an obtuse angle, B is an acute angle. And if they are there, and from our definition that we already know, we know that linear pairs are supplementary, right? So all linear pairs are going to be supplementary. So when you're solving these, we're going to do an angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. And that's the equation that you're going to use at all times when you're, sub, when you're solving. Okay? Let's move on to the third and last uh, angle relationships with parallel lines and a transversal that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about some more a little bit later. The last one that we're going to talk about are corresponding angles. Corresponding C-O-R-R-E S-P-O-N-D-I-N-G, corresponding. So we have our parallel lines. Transversal. One, two, three, four, five, six, excuse me, not five, six, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Now, corresponding. The way that I like to explain corresponding angles are they're angles that are in the same location on the other parallel line. So as I look at angle one, would, I would say that this is on the top left of the top parallel line. Well, which angle is on the top left on the bottom parallel line? And you would say A. So corresponding angles would be 1 and A. Corresponding to 2, 2 is on the top right of the top parallel line, and B is on the top right of the top parallel line. So 2 and B. Bottom right on the top parallel line would be 3, and I'm going to do a double arrow there. Double arrow, so 3 and C. And then the final one would be long arrow, Four and D. Now, corresponding angles, what are they? So we have an obtuse angle here, and we have an obtuse angle here. Obtuse and obtuse. For 2 and B, they're both acute, so both acute. For 3 and C, they're both obtuse. And then for 4 and D, they're both acute. So these corresponding angles are also going to be congruent. at all times. So as you notice, the vertical angles are congruent, the linear pairs are supplementary, and the corresponding are congruent. Those are your only options. Congruent or supplementary when you're dealing with angle pair relationships. Okay? So, you can really do this pretty easily by just looking. Are they both obtuse? If they're both obtuse or both acute, then they have to be congruent. But as soon as you have one obtuse and one acute that go together, they can't be congruent. They can't be the same, so they have to be supplementary 100% of the time. And your equation for supplementary is angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180. Your congruent equation would be, and we'll use these examples, it would be angle 1 is equal to angle A. And then you would solve. Okay. I hope that helps. Again, watch this back. It won't take that much longer to watch it back. Copy it down and try and understand it. If you understand the language and the vocabulary, it will help you dramatically.
Have a good one.